Okay, so this week I'm furious that the boss of the university's admission service is telling graduates not to worry their little heads about finding a job straight after university. Yes, boss of UCAS, Mary Kerner Cook, reckons students are so stressed out after exams there shouldn't be pressure on them to embark on a permanent job straight away. And she says believing you have to land a career straight after university is just too utilitarian, don't you know? I'm sorry, but this is not at a time youth unemployment accounts for 35% of the jobless total. And I can't see many parents who've scrimped and saved and taken out a second mortgage to support their kids through uni being happy with them coming home clueless about what they want to do. Anyway, haven't students had three years to think about what they want to do in between the drinking? Look who's enjoying a pint here. <laughs> The partying, oh, there's jubes on the dance floor. <laughs> and the studying, Rachel, the bookworm. The truth is that in today's cutthroat, competitive world, young people need drive, ambition and determination to succeed. But they'll never develop these skills when they're being told to live off the bank of mum and dad while they consider life, love and the universe. This is nannying on a grand scale, and it's really not helping young people to tell them that getting back onto the career ladder is not urgent or important, because it is. Well, Carol, I, I think you got stuck somewhere in 1955, in honesty. Yeah. Uh, but we'll discuss it. But first of all, let's just have a... I think you're, mis you're, you're not being fair on her. Let's look at what she actually said. I'm not saying for a minute that everyone should leave university and just have a DOS for a while, but um, I do think it's unhelpful that universities' success in preparing people for graduate employment is measured by the number of people who are in graduate jobs after six months. You know, life, I don't think, uh, works like that. It's not all about the lawyers and the medics and the people going into financial services. Lots of people need time to find their niche in, uh, you know, in the 21st century workplace. Sure, I think the world changed from when we were young. I think uh, marriage happens much later, certainly women have children much later. And what it's done, it's turned people's 20s into a different time to the t sort of my t age, 21, 22, when you felt desperate to get a career. And therefore, I don't think it is vital that the first thing they have to do at leaving university is go get a job. Now, I spent 11 years as the Chancellor of the University of York, and I used to, I gave, I must have done 3,000 handshakes a year, you know, your hand falls off in the air. Uh, and I used to, on a selective basis, ask people what they were going to do next. And what was interesting was what changed over that 10 years, because you went through a recession as well, what changed over that 10 years was, first of all, the, the increase in the numbers who went on to do further education, who went on to do MAs. Secondly, the numbers who still said, oh, I'm going to take a gap year, having probably had a gap year before. I don't mind that. Let them, let them well, do you see, it. You, but you would say that because it, because you're a wealthy man, and and middle class and wealthy people can afford to let their kids take a gap year. The bottom line is for for most kids going to university. Why would you? This, I mean, this business about. And by the way, when she said that, that was the day after the original article was published, and she was much stronger on the first day on her interview with the Telegraph. However, but why would you go to university and not expect to get a job at the end of it when you're going to rack up a forty-four grand debt because that's the debt you build up plus nine grand. Intuition phase. Why would you go to university and think that you're there to read Shakespeare under a Can tree? I you're there to. Well, go. I've got. I got a child of 24, an adult a child of 24, one of 23, and one of 20. And the answer to your question is the market for graduate employment is really ropey. And what's happening is employers are assuming that um, graduates are going to take any job, often unpaid, often for below minimum wage. My daughters on a one-year graduate traineeship for £15,000. Would it not actually have been better? I mean, she's actually in an extremely interesting, vibrant, etc. company, and she's doing very well. But what would have been wrong with her taking more time, as in Germany, where... The, you know, the because average age of getting a job. Look how can't interesting. Afford to take more time. Exactly. You no, know, I was moving on to that. But, but, no, but, but my, don't my make it into a class. My or, argument with her. You. But, it, but it sort of is a class. So my, my argument with her were, was saying she was saying it was too utilitarian to think about a degree being something you get work with. That's why kids are prepared to take on a forty-four grand debt because it is. It is because the, they think they're going to get their dream they're job at the end of it and pay back. As you know, you don't. 
pay back your debt until you're earning £21,000 yes. a year. And how are Most you of do these that if graduates you're doing are not work? actually making how do you that do money that for if years. You, if you're doing voluntary <laughs> work or working at Starbucks or taking downtime in any way, but more, more to the point is, why after three years at university, drinking, partying, and yes, studying, why would you want Carol, to have one another thing. You haven't. Months? I'm sorry, I don't want to make you're this You're going to tell me up. I haven't been to no, university. No, I'm going to tell you you don't have children of that age group. It is a completely different world. It's not and, a different world. And they you spend, have to study I've seen this from my, they spend the last year when they're doing finals in a state of acute yes. stress, thinking, what oh, am I going to do next? Everyone's yeah, stressed. No, you try they are doing finals. Job, that's being stressed. You try living on the minimum wage. That's what causes stress. Of course, the world is about stress. We all have to no, just but, deal with it. Listen to what she said and listen to what we're listen saying. To what she said. she um, said you spend the rest of your life in the workplace. Take your time before you jump in. Fine. Michelle. I, I do have a view on university and I didn't go to university. Um, and what I think is too much of a measure of success to me is placed on whether or not you went to university and whether or not you've got a degree. I think that way too many employers are now asking for degrees just as standard when you probably perhaps many years ago didn't need a degree for that level of job mm. so i think we've got a culture of underemployment now so you've got these people exiting university with a with a very valuable degree but they're underemployed they're doing a job that really it was it wouldn't have previously been regarded as graduate level so for me i respect employers like ernst and young at the moment they've they're taking mm. away Penguin. their yeah they're taking away mm. their requirement for a degree Good. Um, yeah, which I think is absolutely um, fantastic. And then what else I would say is we need to value um, different types of learning as much as we value universities, so apprenticeships and mm, things like that. To yes. me, they're just as important yes. and valuable. Uh, yeah. Isn't uh, it falls to me as the tabloid journalist to calm matters down here, which is something that comes very easily. I think all of you are making a lot of sense. Greg, to you, I would say you're right. The, the, the dynamic has changed. But you also mentioned this, the gap year has been introduced. So to take borrow a point from Carol, in some instances, in some instances, mum and dad, the child wants to go through Cambodia or Thailand or Europe and, oh, don't worry, I'll get a bar job, I'll pay for it. In the end, they never quite get enough money. So mum and dad have had to fund the gap year and then the child yeah. comes back. And let's be honest, what you study in three years, you could do in a year or certainly a year and a half. If, if you can, it doesn't need to, well, you'd know better than that. I think we could compress some of the courses so it's not three. So again, you could minimise the expense. And then for certain groups of parents, Carol is right, because, dear God, surely now my son, daughter is going to get a job. And in fact, there's this suggestion that don't stress, don't stress. But then you're, you're right in what you say, and it comes down to the individual. And this is where it's very, particularly when you talk about children, because there will be some children, clearly like yours, and I'm proud to say like mine, who are really worried. So when the degrees were actually coming up, they really applied themselves. So they didn't want to let mum and dad down. They knew, that they, knew, they knew that they needed to do well. But there will be kids, other children, as Garrel said, who just think, well, this is great. There's another six months lying around watching TV, I watching the pledge. Well, no, like but that. there, there will, there will be some. Children. And just finally, Michelle is also, yeah. Michelle is also right in that too much is set, too much store is set by those university those university qualifications. So I'm here to bring peace <laughs> and harmony. All right. Actually, well, of course, all right. Of course, part my of job is done. But, I mean, part, part of the issue is that 10% used to go to university. Now, now 50% Now 40 to 50% yeah. goes. Yeah. And yeah, therefore, 50%. as you're right, what used to be, what were at one time not graduate jobs have now become graduate jobs because mm. so many more people go. All I'm saying is, the idea, I mean, when, when I left school, you know, I went to, I went under the encouragement of my parents as a trainee manager at Marks and Spencer, and thank God got sacked after three <laughs> months because I might have spent my life there. And <laughs> you the, but the days, <laughs> yes, I was, I was, I was not very good at it actually. I was a I, checkout girl at uh, Well, yeah, Spencer, yeah, my, my, my major yeah. contribution is I set up the all-time broken biscuits record <laughs> by, <laughs> by seeing how fast I could get round the the, uh, yeah. uh, the warehouse. <laughs> um, but no, what I'm saying is. The days when you got a job and that's what you did for the rest of your life are oh, long gone. Yeah. So it really doesn't matter whether you start at 21 or at 24 yeah. anymore, whereas it used to. But there's intense competition in the workplace just now. And, and, and leaving, if, if, if I was an employer and I saw a young person coming to me at 24 instead of 21, I'd wonder what they'd been doing for the past three years. And if they tell me they'd been on a gap beer and, and swanning around wherever, I, wouldn't, I would look at them and think, you're not determined, you don't, want, you don't have the ambition to get on. You're more interested but, in having, or, or you might say, "What an interesting experience!" And you know so much more about the world than. Well, it, you don't know that. Well, because actually, most of what you do at university doesn't really help you in the job. Well, it kind what of you're if looking you do for this, is people, if you study people, law, if you well, study what it, it's sure, but help that's you. the point she was making: law, finance. I mean, what I used to say to all these students every year in the speech I made at graduation ceremonies was one thing: 
if you get a job and you don't like it, leave. Do I, something else. Don't stick there. And, and that's what I think what you'd encourage them to do. They get the job, they've got to have a job, they get there and say, yeah. And how appropriate do that. as we're on the matter of education, just need to get one statistic out there. In England, it's more around 30% uh, of young people and others who go to university, so the figure's closer to 30%, Greg. I thought it was higher than that. Anyway, I mean, my principle is my kids leave university and then they're off the books. So if whether they work or whether they don't work, that's, she their, said, that's their call. Mary Connor Cook advised kids to leave university and go and live with their mum and dad at I, home and take I'm time sure, out. But I'm yeah, sure they but, don't want to, Carol. But, but, but anyway, listen, but I'm afraid we've got to wrap this one do. up. But